Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to win the four game NBA main slate on Thursday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. Really appreciate all you guys that came and check out the live stream today. We hit uh, about 150 concurrent viewers, so um, appreciate all support as always. If you're unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload on Apple Podcasts. Link is down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. And if you guys have an extra minute or two out of your day, if you could leave a five-star rating or review, would really help me out, boost me up in those Apple Podcast rankings. Um, premium content, offer that on Patreon.com. Two different packages, NBA and NFL. Cover the main and the show on slates. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Prize Picks. Guys, Prize Picks is a player prop site where there's a couple different ways you can play. You can take over under on fancy points. You can take over under on straight up points, assist, rebounds, three pointers made. Um, you can also mix and match sports. And right now they have second half contest posted for NBA if you'd like to play. So if you guys want to try it out, make sure to sign up and use my code DKDFS. It is DKDFS, all one word. You get a 100% match up to $100. Basically a free $100 if you deposit using my code. And finally, I want to thank you guys for all of your continued support on these YouTube videos. Just make sure if you do enjoy the free content to hit that like button, start to aim for 100, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Okay, so before we get into players and the prices for this uh, short four-game slate, let's look back mine up here from tonight. So tonight I played a pretty contrarian. Um, so let's go over my lineup. John Morant, Lavert, Marcus Morris, Porzingis, Garza, Ingles, Kyle Anderson, and JaVale McGee. And the reason I said I, pl I played it pretty contrarian was, um, I well, I thought Porzingis was going to be low-owned. He actually got 40% on his ship, but I went to a low-owned Lavert. And I talked about this on Patreon, how... Um, you know, once we got news that Marcus Smart was out, that Peyton Pritchard was was an optimal play, uh, but I thought he might be a little bit over-owned in tournaments. So I was like, you know what? I'm really scared about doing this, but I think I'm going to fade Pritchard because I think the ownership is going to be a little bit inflated. It worked out, but like, it was not something I was confident in at all. I was just going super contrarian. I faded, uh, I think the chalkiest play on the slate in Pey Peyton Pritchard, he was like 70% in all high stake stuff. So everyone pay played Peyton Pritchard. Again, my, my reasoning for fading him was um, I was going very contrarian and I just knew the ownership would be a little bit too much, right? He was, he was definitely an optimal play, but the ownership would be a little bit too high in tournaments. So that's kind of what I talked about this year, how in GPPs, uh, the pivots make a lot of sense, right? Because the optimal plays, the best plays, they're getting properly owned. A lot of the time, they're getting very over-owned in tournaments. So as I said, it makes for, for decent pivots or maybe fade one or two of them in, in a tournament. And that's what I did. It worked out this time, but again, that was not something I was confident in at all. Um, John Morant, Jago, God, he is so good. 66 fancy points. Again, I went to a low on Levert, ended up working out. I actually was surprised he got 15% ownership at this price, but 50 bomb from Levert. I went to Marcus Morris at somewhat low ownership. He had a 40 bomb. Porzingis off to an okay start. I went to Luca Garza, who just played a ton of minutes, uh, and that was the reason he got there but he did not play well. Uh, Joe Ingles, Slow Mo, and JaVel McGee. Um, I was debating going to Clarkson and um, Jalen Smith as a pivot. I ended up keeping Ingles and McGee, but the, the pivot definitely would have uh, done better. Jalen Smith actually outscored McGee. He was someone I was extremely high on for value. And then also, once we got the news that Shea Gilles Alexander is out and Ty Jerome was starting, I made a post on Patreon. I was like, hey, I like Ty Jerome quite a bit with him starting. I didn't end up playing him, uh, but he went off too. I think he went for almost a 50 bomb. So Slow Mo was also another piece of chalk that was a pretty big bust there's a lot of landmines right you had Pritchard you had slow-mo um I can't there's a lot of other guys here well, let's go over ownership this is in the million dollar maker guys mega milli maker I believe it was a two thousand dollar entry so this is the winning lineup right now white uh or Walton white Diallo who got like no ownership Horford McGee John Morant Dort and Devin Booker so a lot of low owned guys here McGee relatively popular job relatively popular but other than that it was Everyone in this lineup is pretty low owned. Let me scroll down to the bottom. We can take a look at uh, some of the chalk that busted. And again, there was a good amount of it that did bust. Um, Peyton Pritchard being the one that was, uh, you know, that everyone had that busted. Slow mo, again, extremely popular in high stakes. He was a bust. Trey Young, very popular in high stakes. He was a bust. Malik Monk was kind of a bust. Um, let's see. What else? What else? 
who else? I, I, the Diallo game was crazy, but you did have Frank Jackson get injured. Um, that did uh, obviously boost those guys, but the 60 bound from Diallo is crazy. Um, what else? Yeah, Peyton Pritchard, again, was the chalkiest player in high stakes in this tournament, and he was a massive, massive bust. Um, but, yeah, that is kind of it for the look back. So we'll see if I end up uh, getting in the cash or missing by 0.25 points again because of a, a box score error. Um, how about this, guys? Let me just start this off. If you guys uh, didn't see my tilt uh, last night, Jokic, uh, they, they uh, missed actually two rebounds for him. And they gave him the rebound after they paid out contest. So in my contest, he was locked in at 59 or whatever. They didn't give him the point. But after the fact, they gave him that extra rebound. So like, I don't <laughs> guess I'm going to reach out to drafting support, but I really don't think they can do anything. Uh, but how crazy is that? They gave him the rebound after the fact. Like, you, you just can't make that stuff up for how to lose a slate by, you know, the, clearly Jokic getting two rebounds. They pay out the contest early. They gave him the rebound after they pay out the contest. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Um, all right. But let's talk about this uh, four-game slate, guys. So we'll start off on the Philadelphia side. And at the top, Joel Embiid at 11K. I think it makes for a pretty good spend up. I'm not sure he gets a ton of ownership on the slate, but Brooklyn, not a team I'm scared of, uh, you know, for defensively on, on the uh, the center position, you know, whether it be Claxton or LaMarcus Aldridge or the dust of dusty Blake Griffin. Um, yeah, I think Joel Embiid, I think he makes for a good spend up. Um, should play low to mid 30s minutes, and I like the spot for him a good amount. Tobias Harris had a really good game last game, kind of an outlier for him at almost 9K, more of a secondary play. He will be the number two in offense, but he seems priced about right. We do have Drummond coming back, but he's way, way too expensive. Um, as far as the guards, Seth Curry, Tyrese Maxey, neither really stand out again curry is going to play mid 30s minutes but he's pretty score independent tyrese maxi had an awful game last game the price did drop him a, him a bit though to 5.6 from 6.4 so i think he makes for a pretty safe play like i just kind of throw the last game out the window he should play low to mid 30s minutes and again this is an up-tempo game now shake milton might come back danny green i believe is still in the health and safety protocols if shake milton comes back it's going to make you know the, the likes of like thibel niang cork a little bit risky risky er if shake milton danny green are still out then you know i got matisse thibel probably probably plays 30-ish minutes like they're going to need his defense on Kevin Durant so even though he doesn't do a ton when he's out there I expect him to play big minutes I think he's a fair value play Niang at 3-4 we probably get somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes from him I think he makes an okay value option then Korkmaz probably sees the court as well maybe mid-teens minutes so those three are, are viable with probably Thibel being the safest because of the minutes all right, on the net side, so we do have Kevin Durant back. Haven't seen anything on a limitation yet, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. We also have a couple other guys coming back. We have Aldridge coming back. We have Cam Thomas coming back. So this is, uh, you know, the Nets are getting relatively healthy now. So we'll start with KD and Harden. Um, again, just monitor the news here. I think right now with KD coming back from the protocols, maybe Harden will be the slightly safer option. Um, but again, Harden in his first game back, he played 39 minutes, so... We'll monitor it, but at their respective price points, I think they're both contrarian options, um, both in play, but neither really stands out to me. Patty Mills is too pricey at 7.2K with Kevin Durant back. He will now be the third wheel. Um, that's just too expensive. Marcus Aldridge is 6-1. I'm going to stay away from him. Uh, Claxton with Aldridge back definitely uh, should lose minutes, so we'll see if they do the starting lineup. If Claxton still starts, I guess you could take a shot on him, but like with Aldridge back, going up against Embiid, not something I feel great about. And then value-wise, eh, eh, Bruce Brown at 4-8. A couple other guys coming back. His minutes are a little bit riskier. And Cam Thomas should see some rotation minutes. You have Benbury that should see the rotation. James Johnson at 3-6. Honestly, probably the value get play I feel the best about. Like, even with Kevin Durant in the rotation, when Kevin Durant was in the rotation, James Johnson was still playing, like, low to mid-20s minutes. So I still think he gets similar run, which makes him a fair value play. But probably not going to get to anyone else. All right, Cleveland and Washington. The Cleveland team are very shorthanded. Super unfortunate for Rubio. He's having a great season. Torn ACL out for the year. That is just awful. Garland is still out, um, still in the health and safety uh, protocols. And Jared Allen is doubtful. Don't expect him to play. So we got to see what Cleveland's going to do with the starting lineup. We do. There's a chance Chetty might cut, be back, which is pretty big. They thought he would be back uh, last slate, um, but there's optimism he, he will return for this game. So, like, Who's going to start at the point for this team, right? If Chetty plays, he might start at the point. 
or if Chetty's out, they might go point Okoro, who did run the point in the summer league uh, for Cleveland. And he can run the point guard position because, like, I don't think they want to start Kevin Pangos at the point. So, like, I think they just might start Okoro here at the point. So, like, they might start, like, Okoro, Asman, Markinen, Love, Mobley, like a bigger lineup. They could also, like, Denzel is a guy that can run the point guard as well. He's a decent ball handler. So, like, again, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do the starting lineup. But Mobley, 7.8K, um, played 30 minutes in his first game back. Um, you know, wasn't really limited. So, I think he's a okay option. The only issue is the price. Uh, Kevin Love at 6'7". I do like the price point for him. He played 32 minutes last game. So, you know, he can play big minutes if they need him to. We know he's productive. Um, so I do like Kevin Love a good amount, whether he starts or comes out the bench. Lori Markin at 5'8", I think is a fair option in the mid-range. He's kind of been struggling a bit of late, but um, there is usage to go around with basically no point guard in this team. Again, Chetty, if he plays, I like him. If he misses, then my guess is like a Coro might start at the point guard. If, if a Coro starts at the point, I like him for value. Um, again, they could go to Pangos, I guess, and move him to the starting lineup. Kyle Guy is on or Wait, is Kyle Guy... Yeah, he's on the Heat. Like, DraftKings just... Yeah, why is he still in the Cleveland Cavaliers player pool? Um, Denzel Valentine, though, I do expect him to play some good minutes, too. I think he's a fair value option. It's really just kind of keep an eye on what Cleveland does in the starting lineup. Keep an eye on the Allen news and keep an eye on the Chetty Osmond news. All right, moving on to Washington. So, Brad Beal's the big one here. He is currently questionable. If he cannot go, uh, they are thin. And Spencer Dinwiddie was, like, really good at 7.1K. He played 42 minutes last game. Now, I don't think we get 42 again from Dinwiddie, but... Clearly, there is no limitations on Spencer Dinwiddie. So if there's no Beal, I like him here. And then Kuzma would be the number two in offense. Also should play big minutes, would be a fair option. No Montrezl Harrell. I think Gafford is a great play if, and that is a big if, if he can stay out of foul trouble here. Cleveland's a big front court. So they're going to need Gafford to probably play mid-30s minutes. But like, there's also like probably a, an above 50% chance he gets in foul trouble. So I think he's going to be popular. I think he makes for an interesting fade in tournaments because... You could very easily get two quick ones in Gafford and, um, yeah, get leverage to the field. So that one's a tricky one. If Gafford stays out of foul trouble, I love him, but uh, there's a good chance he does get in some foul trouble. Denny at 4-7 has been playing pretty big minutes. I think he's an okay play, uh, but still has a relatively low floor. KCP, there's a chance he might come back too, so that will kind of take the likes of, like, Kispert and Bertans out of play. But if KCP and Beal are still out too, then, like, Kispert probably plays 30-plus minutes. He's not very productive, but he's only 4K. And then Davis Bertans has just been god-awful last couple of years, but, like, he'll probably play 20-ish minutes. Um, so, yeah, Washington, if there's no Beal and no KCP, they're going to be shorthanded once again. Milwaukee and Orlando, so they're running this game back again. Um, somehow the Orlando Magic kept the game competitive last game. I have no idea how. So here's the issue I have with the, the uh, boxes. The same thing I said last time is I'm not confident this game stays close. Um, but if the Magic can somehow keep the game close, like they did last game, you could see some big games from these Bucks guys. So a guy like Giannis in play for tournaments. Drew Holiday, Middleton, a little bit too pricey for me. Portis at 7.5 feels a little bit too pricey as well. Boogie Cousins with Portis back. Uh, minutes have been down on him. Um, I think he's not out of play, but um, definitely a GPP only play. And then again, you have DiVincenzo back in this rotation. Like the Bucks are basically fully healthy outside of Brook Lopez, so um, not much that I love here on the Milwaukee side. On the Orlando side, so keep an eye on Bamba and Terrence Ross. I guess there's a chance they could come back. If everyone that's questionable is out though, and you think this game stays competitive, then you can take shots on guys like Carr Jr. and Wagner. These are going to be the two reasons why they keep the game competitive. Wagner went crazy last game, went for 56 fantasy points. Um, very happy for a Michigan man. He has been playing really well this year. And then Wendell Carter Jr. played 33 Mets, one for 40 fancy points. So these two make for good tournament plays. Like if you're playing Giannis, I think it definitely makes sense to get to one of Carter Jr. or Wagner because the way Giannis is going to smash is if this game stays close. Well, how is this game going to stay close? It's Wagner, it's Carter Jr. So those two I think make for good tournament plays. Gary Harris also probably plays big minutes, but 5.1K feels priced about right. He'll take a backseat to Wagner and Carter Jr. in the offensive end. Robin Lopez might start and play mid-20s minutes, a fair value play. Now, Gravit will uh, enter the health and safety protocols mid-game. RJ Hampton, my guess is he picks up the start. If he does, I like him for value. Um, only 3.9K does have shooting guard eligibility as well. Um, 
And then as far as the guys in the bench go for the Magic, like, if you think this game turns into a massive blowout, you can target maybe the likes of like a Tim Frazier, maybe a Mo Wagner at 3.2K. And they, like you can target these end of the bench guys if you are if you do think this game blows out. All right, finally, Golden State, Denver. So still tilted by the game last night, how low scoring it was and, uh, you know, the box score mishap. But yeah, Steph Curry, well, he was, that was just atrocious first half from him. I think he had like under 10 fancy points. He had like, I think no points in the first half, no real life points. Finished with 33 fancy points. Again, this is the thing with Steph Curry is a lot of the time, he is going to bust for you. So he's never a cash game play. Um, but for tournaments, I think he's always a good option because he still has 60 plus fans point upside, uh, but just also a much lower floor uh, as opposed to some other stars in the slate. You do have Jordan Poole coming back. So like Poole, Wiggins, they're more secondary plays for me here. Gary Payton, too pricey with Poole and Wiggins, both healthy. Otto Porter Jr. at 5K, played 26 minutes. Um Again, with Wiggins and Poole back, he feels a little bit overpriced. No Draymond still, so Juan Toscano Anderson most likely starts again. He played 23 minutes. Assuming he starts again, I think he's a fair value play, a guy that can contribute in a lot of different ways. The Dust of Iguodala played 24 minutes. I mean, yeah, you can play him. He literally airballed that three at the end. One guy I do like here for value, though, is Kevon Looney. Uh, played tw- I mentioned that. I was like, I think that he's going to have to play big minutes here in this game. Well, he played 26 minutes. Was in some foul trouble, but I think he's going to have to play all the minutes can handle against Jokic. So I do kind of like Looney if he can stay out of foul trouble. I think he plays big, big minutes. If he, if you think he gets in foul trouble, then you can look to a guy like Bielitsa who played the backup five. Just because, again, Golden State, just, they don't have any bodies that can throw on Jokic. So uh, Bielitsa, Looney, both in play for me. Probably a lean to Looney um, because I think he plays more minutes unless he gets in some foul trouble. All right, and finally, Denver. So, Nikola Jokic, 11-9. Uh, again, there's not a ton we have to say about him. Just a super high floor, high ceiling. Um, Golden State, they just they have no one that can stop Jokic. So, um, he looks great here at the top. Now, there's a lot of guys status up in the air for Denver. Gordon, questionable. Montemore's questionable. Rivers, questionable. If they're all out, this Denver team looks pretty appealing. Like, Will Barton will be the number two in offense. We'll play mid-30s minutes. And at 5-7, he's too cheap if all those questionable guys are out. Another guy that looks good. Composo, 4.1K, played 32 minutes. A guy that doesn't have to score to get fancy points can contribute in a lot of different ways. I love that. He also has shooting guard eligibility. He looks really good. Bones Highland played pretty significant minutes on the bench. He played 24 minutes. I think he's an interesting GPP play. Jeff Green will play minutes, but again, it's Jeff Green. Like every once in a while, he can go for like 25 to 30, but most of the time, he's going to bust for you. Um, Jamichael Green at 3 2 played the backup five. He played 13 minutes, but. Um, probably not enough uh, for me to consider him. Devon Reed was in the rotation. He played 18 minutes. Again, he would probably play more if Austin Rivers is out. Um, they dusted off Zeke Naji and played him 19 minutes um, at the flat min price. Again, playable. But yeah, if, if, if these questionable guys are out, Denver's going to look pretty good. Now, if all the questionable guys are in, then definitely hurts the value here for Denver. Um, so again, monitor the status there with those three guys, uh, those three questionable players. But yeah, guys, that will do it for the video today. So if you haven't enjoyed the free NBA content, just make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Would great, would really, really appreciate that, guys. Uh, thanks again. Have a great night. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do a YouTube live stream tomorrow. It's going to be a travel day for me, but we'll let you guys know. Um, so thanks again, guys, and I will see you all in the next video.